dengan nafas Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Saya dengan segala sukacitanya Merasmikan Maida Open Day Terima kasih Wassalamualaikum Alhamdulillah kita mendapat sambutan yang amat baik 15 syarikat yang memamerkan keluaran mereka dan banyak keluaran ini merupakan high tech ya. Masalah syarikat Malaysia yang membuat software bagi inspection yang segala-galanya automatik ya. Syarikat Malaysia yang buat crane ya. Sebuah so, syarikat oil and gas yang mana pendapatannya 80% luar luar negara inilah ya, perkara yang telah kita lakukan untuk mentransformasikan ekonomi Malaysia dan kita berbangga kerana ini semua telah menjana peluang pekerjaan ya, umpamanya sebuah syarikat di sini hari ini dia 8,000 pekerja 3,000 merupakan yang bekerja dalam R&D R&D mana mereka graduate 1,000 dalam shared services 50% pekerja mereka adalah merupakan yang terlibat dalam dalam kerja-kerja yang membayar gaji yang tinggi ya inilah yang kita mahukan dan kita mahu Maida uh, untuk terus uh, melang dalam kerjanya uh, jadi kita berbangga kerana hari ini mendapat sambutan yang baik termasuk daripada anak muda yang uh, sedang mencari peluang pekerjaan kita nak uh, Maida jangan berupa hati dan kejayaan kita mahu uh, mereka tingkatkan usaha kita mahu Maida uh, tingkatkan usaha khusus untuk kita mencapai negara maju kita mahu Maida memegang peranan utama dalam memastikan Malaysia mencatat status negara maju dalam tahun tahun, tahun 2020 kita memandang meng, meng, uh, kerja kuat untuk memastikan lebih banyak peluang pekerjaan yang berkualiti diwujudkan dalam negara kita Welcome to MIDA Open Day 2017. Thank you all for taking time to join us today and we are, we are very honored that Yang Muhammad Dr. Sri Mustafa is able to be here with us despite landing in KLA just this morning from his visit to Japan with Tengku Makara Kelantan and also uh, meetings in Putrajaya uh, going through the challenge of the traffic uh, coming down to Kuala Lumpur. It is great to have the Bohemian Tattoo Sri among us as your presence reflects your dedication in reaching out to the business community, chambers and associations, the job seekers as well as the general public. I also want to welcome our colleagues and other viewers who are joining us today where our internet webcast, a virtual extension of, the, of this new meeting space. 50 years is an exciting milestone. It is not just an occasion to celebrate, but an opportunity to look back and appreciate the foundation laid by our predecessors. And I want a moment to look ahead at the mountains that we have yet to climb. The program live up today serves to showcase MIDA's signature role and functions in connecting with our stakeholders to create positive impact towards fulfilling the country's aspiration in becoming a high income nation. Ladies and gentlemen, MIDA was first set up to specialize in promotion of industrialization, mapping out the appropriate strategies 
coordinate the activities of relevant organizations in the public sector and promote Malaysia to industries at home and abroad. Right from the beginning, MIDA was very aggressive in gearing itself to promote the establishment of industries in Malaysia. Today, as Malaysia moves towards the next level of development, MIDA continues to make the necessary changes and re-engineer our internal processes to deliver more efficient and effective services. With 12 regional offices and 23 uh, overseas offices, consisting of staff strength of over 700 employees, MIDA remains dedicated to promote both foreign and domestic investments in Malaysia. The emphasis now is on embracing the digital future, nurturing local businesses to become global champions through integrating into the international supply chain, as well as to create more skilled jobs and opportunities for our talent. Most of you may have noticed the time tunnel feature that we have in our lobby. I encourage all of you to walk through the tunnel and understand the journey that MIDA has taken over the last 50 years and also the milestone that we have achieved. The main feature of our open day program is the career fair. We initially kept the career fair participation at 40 companies due to the limited space available. However, due to the overwhelming interest from companies, the MIDA team worked hard to provide allocations for the additional companies. Today, we are proud to feature a total of 57 companies for the career fair. This includes notable local and foreign companies from the aerospace, chemical, machinery and equipment, electrical electronics, logistics and e-commerce industries. Leveraging on our close relationships with the industry and professional bodies, we are doing what we are doing today is to join forces with our corporate partners to meet the growing demand of quality job opportunities. While the career fair is the main attraction for the general public today, we have also taken advantage of the strong participation of the companies to have some of them showcase their products and services. The industry exhibitions at our Business Information Center, or BIC on level two, with companies such as Intel, Petronas, UMW, Roadstar, and CCM Pharmaceuticals serves to inform the public on the developments of the main industries that have contributed significantly to the country's economic growth. Later during the Minister's tour, there will be a soft launch by Victrox of their new Internet of Things software-based product known as V1. It allows users to manage factories smarter and optimizes factory resources across geographical locations. Using V1, the operator is provided with one suite of solutions that connect the inspection machines in production lines to monitor their performance remotely. There will be an interesting real-time demonstration of their product using the video wall at our DIC. I welcome our media friends to join us for this demonstration at level two after this. Ladies and gentlemen, MIDA places a strong emphasis on being customer-centric as well as doing things that add value. In the planning of our open day, we wanted to ensure that we optimize all our resources to provide the most benefit for all our stakeholders, including the business community and potential investors. Hence, we have business clinics running throughout the day at the meeting rooms on the left on level 18 with dedicated desk officers ready to provide a response to every inquiry or issues companies may have. The participating agencies include Telecom Malaysia, TNB, Department of Labor, Royal Nation Customs, and a few others. We take our handholding function seriously as we want to ensure investors obtain all necessary assistance required to run their operations successfully in Malaysia. We also have two business talks lined up today. 
The one helped earlier was by Telecom Malaysia or TM Solutions towards Industry 4.0. There will be another after this by Customs on GST refund. The talk will be held, which is already uh, uh, done, I believe, at 3 p.m. on level 18 in the Japan Group. Running simultaneously with the earlier business talk was the industry talk held right here in this hall with the, public, the IoT effect, opportunities and challenges. And I'm confident that participants had an engaging time, especially with featured presentation by Intel, Infineon and Bitrox. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an exciting time for MIDA as we celebrate our 50th anniversary. Prior to this open day, MIDA has undertaken many initiatives to intensify our engagements towards facilitating and promoting investments in Malaysia. Starting with MNCs and SMEs supply chain development and opportunities conference last year in December at MITI, we have organized a series of the supply chain conferences in Pahang, Penang and Johor, focusing on the respective states' economic strengths. Meanwhile, the next supply chain conference will be held in Sarawak. MIDA have also conducted various related seminars and dialogues that are in line with the government's efforts to accelerate industrial growth through the adoption of smart, manu smart manufacturing and technology. We at MIDA welcome all stakeholders and stand ready to assist you with the support and facilities available to ensure the long-term growth of your investment in the country. On that note, do enjoy the rest of the activities. stands for what my dad does, who doesn't know, know what, you know, how the Tosman looks like, eh? uh, who doesn't know, you know what, what uniform uh, my dad staff wears on some days. Uh, today they are in black and with a brown tudong. Yeah? So my dad has got a certain identity and we would like to share uh, with uh, Malaysians, yeah? uh, to tell Malaysians what we've been doing, my dad's contribution, uh, 50 years is a long time. Uh, in the journey of any organization and uh, it is very important to do this outreach uh, to share the joy and the success of MIDA all these years so that we can all be proud of what MIDA uh, has done to all of us. The MIDA family has got 780 uh, people running the organization as mentioned by Azman, 23 officers abroad and 12 in this country uh, abroad because we need foreign investments uh, in Malaysia, of course, uh, two functions. One is to promote domestic investment. Another is to continue the process of handholding to make sure that the handholding process is effectively done. Uh, companies on the ground have a place to go in case of problems uh, with incentives, with government policies, with uh, foreign labor, with United National Telecoms. Important for MIDA to be on the ground so that Maida can be close uh, to his customers. Today we celebrate 50 years uh, and uh, I would like to commend every, each and every one of the Maida family for a job well done. Uh, 30 years is, is a long time. Uh, I, you know, often get comments wherever I go. I like to be in Kuala Lumpur, outside of Malaysia. How people appreciate the good work that Maida has done. They tell me, thank you Maida. Maida has done a good job. My dad has helped me a lot. These are the kind of things that if you feel proud of my dad as minister responsible, together with Dr. Sriyong and Dr. Tupa Maslan, uh, we'll be proud of my dad. As you all know, I've been telling this to many people, we've got four core businesses. Business number one is investment, to promote domestic and foreign investment. Business number two, promote trade with our friends from overseas. Business number three is trade policy, making, making sure that we have the, the right trade policies. Who to negotiate with? Is it Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP or RCEP, or is it ASEAN, you know? 
and another is development of small medium enterprises. So, so these are our four, our four core businesses, promoting investment, number two, promoting trade, number three, promoting the growth and development of small and medium enterprises, and number four, making sure that we have appropriate trade policies in place to navigate Malaysia in this uh, very challenging waters. So as I said, uh, wherever I go, uh, I, I'm proud of the fact that people speak very highly of Maida. Uh, they say Maida has been instrumental in bringing them to Malaysia. They told me Maida has, has been instrumental in resolving some of the problems of income tax or treasury or customs or, or transnational or telecom, telecoms. These are our partners, state governments. Maida has been helpful in guiding them where to locate the operation. Yeah. And I just came back from Washington and Tokyo. I was in Tokyo for a couple of days, Washington four days. And I got here the same stories where, where I go. In Washington, I met with about 10 companies. In Tokyo, about 15 companies. Um, and also, I met, I also met business associations, business organizations, US Chamber of Commerce, US Asian Business Council. I met some of the leading multinational companies operating in Malaysia, DC, Washington, DC. Uh, I have two days. Uh, Saturday and Sunday in, in Tokyo and I kept hearing some very good words about Maida and I'm sure many of you, if not all of you here, have similar uh, feedback about Maida. So once again, let us, uh, let us give a big hand to Maida and everyone. Everyone in Maida has been instrumental in uh, making this journey, 50 year journey, uh, very successful. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say a few words about visibility and world class. It is important for any organization to be visible. Malaysia as a country want to be visible. We want to do well. We want to be a developed country by the year 2020. We have to be agile, we've got, we've got to be flexible. We need to be able to adapt to changing circumstances very quickly. We have to be ahead of the curve. We cannot be lagging behind. So this is very important. important have a certain level of visibility, not, not any visibility, a high level of visibility, people know you. People know Malaysia as a great country, a country which has transformed itself from a poor agricultural country to one of the uh, most successful developing countries in the world. Yeah? People know Malaysia as a beautiful tourist destination. People know Malaysia as a country which has enjoyed peace and harmony for many, many years. People know Malaysia as a place where we have racial unity and religious tolerance. So these are important. These are important trademarks of Malaysia. But what is important is to make sure that all these trademarks are highlighted. We want to ensure that we enjoy the highest visibility possible in the world. We are we talking about world class. We want to be a developed nation. We want to provide uh, Malay, young Malaysians with jobs. Yeah? Not any kind of job, but jobs which will enable them to earn a good living and sustain a family. Yeah. Uh, we know, for example, that there are, there are many young Malaysians, they might be in the B40, uh, people with family of four earning about 4,000 ringgit and below, these are the B40, they have a job, but they can't afford to have a decent home, uh, they can't afford uh, to have a decent holiday, uh, and these are the kind of things that as a, as a country you want to change, want to move up the value chain. These are the characteristics of a high income economy. A high income economy is an economy where citizens earn sufficient money for recreation, sufficient money to buy a decent home, and sufficient money to sustain a good education, sound education for the children. And we are not there yet. That's why we are, we are struggling still. We are working very hard to get 2020 to 2017. We got three years, three more years to go, and that therefore Maida plays a very important role in transforming, normally transforming the landscape of Malaysia from an agricultural economy to an, an economy based on industry. But we want Maida to be successful in transforming the lives of Malaysia. Yeah. Malaysians those days do not have a job. There's a lot of unemployment, underemployment in rural areas, a lot of surplus labor in agriculture. That surplus labor has been brought to the uh, semi urban and urban areas. They have uh, gained employment uh, in, the, in the rural areas, in agriculture. They hardly uh, have a job, they are underemployed. We've been successful in doing that. We've been successful in providing jobs to Malaysians.